This is RTV6 News at 7, working for you. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Mullins. Want to get right to the latest on the coronavirus and its impact on Indiana. New developments from the State Department of Health. Today we learned Indiana's death toll from COVID-19 has topped 500. 519 to be exact. The number of confirmed cases in our state just over 10,000. More than 54,000 people have been tested so far in Indiana. The state of Indiana's stay at home order will stay in effect until at least May 1st. That word today from Governor Eric Holcomb during his daily media briefing. Governor Holcomb says the order will likely be changed after May 1st. An example of that change would be opening up more elective procedures. A group of people say they are growing impatient with the stay at home order. They say they plan to defy social distancing recommendations and hold a protest Saturday afternoon outside the governor's residence. The protest is being organized by two conservative political groups, the Indiana Conservative Alliance and the Grassroots Conservatives, a Facebook page for for the planned protest says it will be a peaceful rally to let the governor know they are not happy with what they call his overreach of government. A Pendleton woman wants you to stay home after losing her husband this month to COVID-19. Lou Berry was only 37 years old when he died at IU Health North on April 6. His wife Brianna wants you to know that this disease is impacting young people too. Brianna says her husband was overweight and had asthma but was otherwise healthy. Brianna believes it's way too soon to talk about lifting the stay at home order. She doesn't want others to have to hear their loved ones last words over the phone. He was telling me that they were going to vent him and he started to tell me, sorry, that um, I needed to be strong and that he was going to fight and he that I was the best thing that ever happened to him and how much he loved me and I loved him. Brianna isn't sure where her husband got COVID-19, but says she's been self-isolating as a precaution. She believes she also had COVID-19, but couldn't get tested because her symptoms were too mild. Nurses who are on probation are forced to stay on suspension longer than expected because of COVID-19, the virus they could help fight if they were working. RTV6 found dozens of nurses are waiting for the board to reinstate their licenses, but they're not meeting right now. RTV6's Stephanie Wade finds out if anything can be done to get those nurses back to work. And they can serve and they can help. And I know um, so, some of them, my clients have specific experience in like ICUs and emergency rooms. That is what's needed right now. Lori Brown is both a nurse and attorney. She is fighting for nurses who are currently suspended or on probation to return and aid in the fight against this pandemic. She says some nurses are eligible to petition to have their licenses reinstated. But because of COVID-19, the nursing board isn't meeting in person to hold hearings and grant this. We spoke with one such nurse who was struggling with an alcohol addiction, substance abuse being the most common cause for suspension. She's complied with her recovery program requirements and wants to help her fellow frontline workers. She prefers we don't identify her. I want to help. I want to get out there and, and provide relief and do what I love to do. It's like I'm sitting on the bench, like, beg and put me in, coach. The professional licensing agency tells RTB6 the Indiana State Board of Nursing is meeting via video conferencing, but their meeting agendas are limited compared to a routine meeting because of Governor Holcomb's executive order requesting all public meetings be limited to essential matters for the time being. We called into the governor's press conference today, but we're unable to ask if he would consider amending that executive order to prioritize reinstating eligible nurses just wanting to help. Working for you, Stephanie Wade, RTV6. If you're a nurse in this situation, reach out to us at workingforyou at rtv6.com. We can put you in touch with resources and we'll let you know if there are any updates to this story. Indy Parks is putting new restrictions to combat overcrowding at city parks. The city says it will ban people from driving motorized vehicles through Eagle Creek Park until further notice. That means only pedestrians and bicyclists will be allowed. Also, the city is closing all four of the dog parks there for the time being. Indy Parks says too many humans have been visiting the parks to meet 
social distancing guidelines. Democracy 2020. Due to the coronavirus outbreak, the Indiana Election Commission has changed some policies for the state's June 2nd primary election. The new changes are limited early in-person voting will be available for one week from May 26 to June 1st. The Secretary of State and the Indiana Election Division will provide counties with training and guidelines on mail handling procedures and personal protective equipment. The commission says that all public buildings such as fire stations and school buildings should be available for use for the June 2nd primary. All absentee ballot applications submitted after December 2nd will be accepted regardless of the excuse given as long as they are otherwise compliant with Indiana law. Kevin. Time to empty the rain gauge. If you have one, we won't see any more rain until maybe Sunday, and that should be light. Today's wasn't too bad. Quarter of an inch or less in the metro area of Indianapolis. Northern portions of the state had some snow or rain-snow mix. For us, the drizzle slowly ending. That freeze warning still in effect. I'll show you the morning temperatures in a second, but the highlight of the weekend, sunshine during the day tomorrow. Off to the east. The drizzle now, the back edge of that to Greensburg, Rushville, around Richmond, that will continue to drift to the east. Biggest impact along I-74 from Greensburg to Cincinnati right now. Temperatures overnight fall from the low 40s where we're at now to the upper 20s and lower 30s in the morning. We'll talk about temperatures as warm as the lower 70s. We'll let you know when that's going to happen coming up. Millions of Americans have already applied for unemployment and more are expected to do the same. Coming up, we're looking at why some states could have trouble funding this surge in claims. Live on CourtTV.com. This is RTV6 News at 7, working for you. Since social distancing efforts began, we've been sharing with you messages from domestic abuse advocates about the dangerous situations some Hoosiers might be facing. There are resources available, but in some cases, picking up the phone to call for help is just not an option. RTV6's Cornelius Hawker shows you an alternative that anyone can take advantage of. Our survivors are, are losing the opportunities that they had because they used to be able to go to work and go to school and take their kids to school. Jamie Schnurpel from the Julian Center on how the coronavirus pandemic has cut off those surviving domestic violence from their usual ways to get help. So you're having people call in for help in the closet or maybe while they're doing laundry and um, it gets a little bit difficult to assess what's going on and be able to provide services in that way um, when you're trying to whisper. You might have noticed on social media, people aware of what could be happening to their friends and family, posting reminders of ways they can get help without specifically saying they're being hurt as to not tip off the abuser. We have seen people who are becoming a little bit more creative in terms of how they can request assistance. We're not being specific about what those posts are saying to keep survivors safe. But another option to discreetly ask for help is to text 911. If you need help and you don't want to be heard asking for help, calling for help, text to 911 is available all over Indiana. Uh, it has been statewide since June of 2016. Indiana State Treasurer Kelly Mitchell, who's also the chair of the statewide 911 board, says text to 911 has been used countless times since its rollout. And while we're all dealing with the COVID-19 outbreak, no one should worry about getting help when they need it. And I want them to hear loud and clear, you can text 911 in Indiana when you need help. People like Jamie hope more attention will be given to the problem of domestic violence so people feel safe in their homes if we ever experience something like this pandemic again. We have to continue this conversation well after COVID so that we can put these things in place and we have them and we rely on them and we use them on a random Tuesday, right? Rather than have to wait until we have to use them. Working for you, Cornelius Hawker, RTV6. More than 118,000 Hoosiers applied for unemployment benefits last week. As unemployment claims continue to skyrocket, many states are running out of money for new claims. Mark Greenblatt from our partners at Newsy explains what this could mean for those needing assistance. The millions of people now out of work are seeking unemployment benefits, which are paid out of state funds. But with so many people seeking help now, some states could run out of unemployment money within the next few weeks, according to a just-released analysis. 
This is an unprecedented crisis. So we have, during the really entire history of the unemployment compensation system, not seen something quite like this. Turns out there are no federal requirements for how much money a state needs to keep at its unemployment trust fund. But even before this current crisis hit, 21 states didn't have enough money to meet the recommended guidelines set by the feds in order to weather a recession. Now, as new unemployment claims pour in, every state but Wyoming is forecast to have their trust funds run out of money within a year, according to a new analysis Thursday from the nonprofit Tax Foundation. 19 states will have their unemployment trust funds run dry within three months. But most alarming, three states, California, New York, and Ohio, could have their trust funds go broke by the end of this month. People have lost their jobs in a very short period of time. The state systems are overloaded. They're having trouble even processing claims, getting the money out the door. Uh, but it is overwhelming those systems. It is overwhelming their finances. But here's the good news. There is a safety net for states who run out of money for unemployment. They can take out interest-free loans from the federal government. The catch? Those loans have to be paid back within two years. The upshot, the cost of failing to plan in advance will end up coming back to bite taxpayers' businesses and any possible recovery to come. This will be difficult for states because as they're growing back, as the revenues are hopefully rebounding, a decent portion of it will be earmarked towards paying off federal loans they're undertaking now. Uh, states could have prepared better. Mark Greenblatt, Newsy, outside Washington, D.C. Well, now you see it, now you don't. Debt collectors might be able to get their hands on your stimulus cash. A loophole in the stimulus plan allows for certain private debt collectors to try to seize the funds. Well, that could apply to old medical debt, credit cards, and some student loans. Attorneys general from half of the states have asked the Treasury Department to revise the guidelines on debt collections. Some states have put their own protections in place. Currently, collectors can't go after the funds for federal taxes or federal student loans. This Central Indiana bank is serving up delicious eats rather than cold hard cash after the break, where they're open and ready for beer business. Be home experts at the IndyChannel.com. Amazon says it is developing its own COVID-19 testing for its employees. CEO Jeff Bezos announced he put together a team of workers to come up with tools for the testing. He says the company will start with a small number of employees soon. Amazon has faced criticism that the company is not doing enough to protect workers during the pandemic. Bezos says they had already made significant process changes, including temperature checks and offering more protective equipment. You may feel like it's tough to lift your spirits right now, but your nutritionist says you can change that with starting to change your diet. Certain foods can help boost your body's production of hormones that make you happy. Nutritionists say greens like spinach, broccoli, and Brussels sprouts improve serotonin levels. Whole grains like oats, brown rice, and whole wheat bread help keep us energized and our brain feeling healthy. Vitamin D has been associated with improving bad moods, but since we may not be seeing a lot of sun right now, egg yolks, fish, and milk can be a good alternative. RTV6 is showcasing local businesses that are still open and serving you during the COVID-19 pandemic. And while the initiative is called We're Open Indy, our effort extends far beyond the city. RTV6's Brad Brown visited a Pendleton restaurant with an historic setting. Right in the middle of downtown Pendleton, the bank is open. Not quite bankers hours, but Tuesday through Saturday for lunch and dinner, and the locals are turning up for takeout. You know, it's not just uh, customers. We don't have customers, we have new friends. This is a tough industry. Um, it, it's hard every day. But the fact that the regulars come in and, and uh, they don't just go to us, they go to some other places as well, and, and, and that's great. But the fact that they're still trying to help us means so much to us. Gary Brammer and his wife Robin have run the bank restaurant since opening it in 2002. The bank used to be a bank. Built in 1910, the building itself is a treasure. Over the century since it opened, it's also been a restaurant previously. And now a place for families and familiar friends to gather for some great food and drinks. Here at the bank restaurant, it's not just uh, come in, eat, get up and go. The normal customers come in and they'll talk to two or three, four booths on their way in, and they'll talk to the other five, six booths on their way out. And that, that's what's cool. And the fact that um, they're still trying to help us is, is tremendous. But as the bank sits empty, the kitchen stays busy. Orders coming in from Pendleton and the towns around, communities supporting one another again when it's needed so much. 
people say, hey, we want, we want you to make it. Uh, we, want, we want to help you get through this. And they want us to succeed. So that's great, too. I mean, they're doing what they can, but at the same time, they can't always, um, they can't always eat out. And if you look at the street, the street's empty. But the community is helping out everybody in town. Gary says he's really missing having his patio open at the bank restaurant as spring begins. He's also disappointed he won't be able to have high schoolers through during prom season. But they are planning quite the reopening for the regulars once the time comes. And a shout out to a couple of other businesses that are open in Pendleton. Catello's is just a few doors down from the bank, offering family style Italian dinners and more. They're open seven days a week. And Jimmy's Dairy Bar has been open since 1954. The walk up window and drive through are still serving all their old time ice cream treats, hot dogs and snacks too near Pendleton Heights High School. Working for you, Brad Brown, RTV6. And we'll have some more favorable ice cream, ice cream eating temperatures. You have to say that slowly within the seven day forecast. We'll finally get back into the 70s. Warmer days ahead, the pattern changes here. Um, no frost or freeze expected within the next week. And our average high is now 64 degrees. We'll be above that at times. There's the low cloud cover. That's the next thing that we need to break through. That will happen from western Indiana to the eastern portion of the state as we go through the night. The clouds break up and the temperature will fall. Already has in Peru, Crawfordsville 36 degrees, while it's 46 in Connorsville and Columbus in eastern Indiana. The drizzle starting to exit. We dry out and temperatures fall. This will be the last freeze warning potentially of the season, certainly of the next seven days. And I think as we tiptoe into spring like this, the likelihood of that coming back is less and less. 56 tomorrow, probably the biggest benefit is all that sunshine and the wind won't be too strong either on Sunday. The chance for showers there. I think we'll have scattered showers in the evening hours into um, Sunday night. Tomorrow, sunshine helps rescue those temperatures. We'll be back to 45 by 11 a.m. Should hear the roar of the lawnmower in the neighborhood tomorrow. Temperatures mid 50s. Lots of afternoon sunshine that'll help dry out the ground a bit. Average highs, we mentioned 64. We're not there yet, but temperatures will climb above average very shortly. Sunday, biggest difference, clouds take over once again, and then the rain shower chances increase in the afternoon. Here's the latest model run. Not much at 7 a.m., just lots of clouds. As we get to 4 o'clock in the afternoon, there are showers through 7 and 11. The showers continue to move from west to east. Rainfall, not impressive, as you can see, quarter of an inch or less, and in some cases, tenth of an inch or less. Steady noticeable warming trend next week. Temperatures, as you can see, into the mid 60s on Wednesday. Warmest temperatures come Thursday and Friday with those temperatures Thursday and Friday jumping. Our chance for rain and even some thunderstorms by a week from today will increase, but that's our highlight. 71 degrees one week from today. We'll be back with more Six News at 7 next. TV.com. RTV6 is proud to be working together with the United Way of Central Indiana. We are teaming up for the COVID-19 Community Economic Relief Fund. The initiative supports organizations that serve people and families affected by the pandemic. You can donate to the fund by texting HELP2020 to 91999. A lot of us are working from home these days, and in some cases, it's giving us a chance to show off things people didn't know about us. For a meteorologist in the UK, he not only did the weather forecast from his home, but he decided he would handle his newscast's closing theme music, too. That's the forecast. Stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Evans of the BBC Wales right there. Okay, Kevin, what talent do you have to share with us with this? Yeah, uh, not with my voice, but I did create this event, Mark. This is the shovel toss. <laughs> We're done with it. <laughs> For the year, I threw it like a javelin. I'm going to mow around that all summer. I'm not touching that shovel till maybe December. <laughs> Bye. See you later. No more <laughs> shovels. All right. Thanks, Kevin, for that. And thank you for joining us here. We'll see you back here tonight at 11.